One of the questions that people cannot ask enough is how to compare dungeon crawls, pen and paper dungeon crawls, the kind of basically the top two, and now I'm going to be talking about four, the top two, the oldest ones in this bunch being D100 Dungeon and Four Against Darkness. I don't have the the main rules here in book form, but this is Four Against Darkness. And also 2D6 Dungeon, which just came out fairly recently and has become rather popular. And also the latest entry into this pen and paper dungeon crawl, Kerr Nathalis, which I did a recent video on and which is very appealing to a lot of viewers. In this video, I am going to talk about these four pen and paper dungeon crawls, and I'm going to compare and contrast them in certain ways. But let me explain to you what the video is not going to do. I'm not going to walk you through the various mechanics and how they differ. I'm not going to tell you that one is better for everybody than all the rest. I'm not going to be ranking them. What I am going to be doing is talking about and identifying five different aspects of gameplay that one might want to understand and how they differ so you can make the right decision for you if you are either just purchasing the game for the first time or wanting to buy some expansions. So those five areas are, I'm going to start out by talking about what do the characters feel like? What do the characters in the base core rules feel like? And what do the characters in the expansions feel like? The second point is, what does the gameplay feel like? And that's going to include, what does it feel like to build the dungeon? What does combat feel like? What does exploration feel like? And I will also divide that up by the core rules as well as expansions. The third is the theme. What types of themes are offered by these games, both in the core rules and in the expansions? The fourth is a little in the weeds, but I think it's important to understand what does leveling up feel like in the game? I'm not going to talk about the mechanics of how it happens, but rather what does it feel like to grow your character? Does it even feel like you are growing your character? And then finally, the fifth point, I'm going to answer the question about what I think is the kind of minimum amount needed for optimum play. Because with Many of these, there are tons of expansions, and with Kernathalus, as I film, there's one expansion and some ancillary materials. So in my opinion, what do you need for the kind of minimum optimal play? I'm going to attempt to keep the video relatively short. There are tons of videos out there, of course, about all of these systems. And in fact, when I was looking to see if anybody had done a video just like this one, I found my own video that I did a couple of years ago that is called Pen and Paper Dungeon Crawls. And in that video, I do talk about D100 and I talk about Four Against Darkness and I think three other pen and paper dungeon crawls that I'm not discussing in this video, but that video kind of goes more through the basics and comparing and contrasting what they each offer. But here, like I said, I want to really focus on the feeling that the game allows you to experience as a gamer, because I think in the end, that is what would guide your decision about which game to purchase, or perhaps which game, if you owned a bunch of them, to go more deeply into the expansions for. So the, the first question is this one about what do the characters feel like? And in a way, looking at character sheets can tell you that, but before we do that, I will say that there is a uh, there is a difference here in the games in that for these three games, you are playing one character and for Four Against Darkness, as the title of the game suggests, you're playing four characters. There are subsequent rules and expansions to allow you to play a party of less than four, but I think the the way that the game has been built really does shine more when you have four different types of characters who can do different types of things. All right, let's talk character sheets. Not the most uh, sexy of images, but I think a way to really get a sense for what the characters feel like. I will pause from discussion of do, uh, Ford Against Darkness for a moment to focus on the three games that have a single character. This is the D100 character sheet. 
this is the Kernathalus, and this is 2d6 dungeon. And even just looking at them, you can get a sense if we put them kind of in order here from what looks the most granular to the least granular, I would say that very much reflects the feeling of playing the character in the game. And all of this is also tied up to what I'm going to be talking about later in terms of leveling up. But to focus on the character, when you are playing your character in D100 Dungeon, you are focusing on a lot of very specific things and very specific amounts of things and experience you have with things. And all of these come from the extensive D100 tables that are in the book. And in the base game for D100 Dungeon, you get a ton of them. So you can see this is the base game for D100 Dungeon, and you can just get a sense here looking as I flip through of the number of tables that they are and the options for character creation. These are boosts that you can get. Everything is a D100 table now. In certain cases, that's 100 entries. Maybe there are some cases where it's 50 entries, but I think really most of them are 100 entries. And here is the entire character sheet reprinted in the back. So you could see the amount of things that you can carry and the items that the values that the items will have and the damage that you're tracking. So you can get a sense of the resource management slash tracking that is demanded uh, in this game and is part and parcel to playing this game. So that is the most granular character sheet and it is the most granular character in terms of doing combat damage and where that damage is and what that means and does that damage your equipment and if so by how much and each piece of equipment comes with a, a buy and sell cost and then there is a way of calculating based on the damage how much that actually means so that is just one example of many of the level of detail that you will get just even from the base game of D100 Dungeon. And if you really want to manage a character that way and manage their equipment and their resources in that manner, it will offer that to you just right from the get-go in the base game. Moving sort of slightly down in level of complexity is the Kernathalus character here, where you have a bunch of skills and you have some attributes here, but as you can see from the way it is laid out, there is just less information. Now in this game, there is also in effect sort of damage. You have a usage die, so as you take damage, for example, and absorb damage with a shield or whatever, you're going to roll a usage die to see if that becomes damage. So that does exist as well, but it is not as... Um, it is not as detailed overall. And here's a quick look at the things that you will be carrying. So you have an equipment slot, you have a belt slot like in D100 Dungeon and a backpack, but it is, um, it's a little bit less in terms of what you're actually carrying and managing. And then these are notes. So this is the entirety of that character sheet. And then the least Detailed is the 2d6 dungeon character sheet, which is really focusing on the key mechanic of that game, which has to do with the dice set that you are rolling. And in this game, you have, for example, a weapon that you pick up, and that is your weapon for the entire game. You are not changing it out. You may be adding things that you can do with it in the form of different die rolls, but it is, it's pretty simplified. And you can see this again, just visually, you can see this in terms of the character sheet itself. There are a couple of conditions that you can get here, but not the level of detail that there are in either Karnathalus or in D100 Dungeon. And then there are some game specific things here, like if you are having favor of the gods that sort of interact with the dungeon itself. And I'll talk about that later when I get to like the feeling of the gameplay. Here you do have, in terms of carrying, you have basically large and heavy and you have small, but again, it is uh, far less detailed than in D100 and Kernathalus for that matter too. 
And you also have on the character sheet this sense, uh, explicit place to write down the story of the narrative moments. And the fact that my sheet is blank shouldn't indicate anything to you. I actually stopped using this sheet when I was playing and I used a notebook instead, but I wanted to show you what the actual official sheet is. And then we get to Four Against Darkness. And there are so many different character sheets out there for Four Against Darkness. I'm showing you this one because it has all the characters on one page. So you can see that it is a pretty light game in terms of what you need to track in terms of stats and things. However, I will also say that um, there are character sheets out there with a lot more information available. So this one is kind of elastic, I think, in terms of playing the base game where you could easily use this one character sheet for your four characters versus playing with some of the expansions and other rules where you might need or want a different type of character sheet. And again, when I play this game, I just make my own cards. And if you've watched my videos on this game, of which I have many, you will see that I create my own character sheets to reflect the specifics of what those characters are. So to sum up, the for the base game, for all of these, the uh, D100 is the most granular and detailed character, followed by the uh, Kernathalus, and then the lightest version, and in a sense, the most generic character is in 2D6 Dungeon. And I think that uh, Four Against Darkness kind of is elastic. The base game is relatively simple, but the expansions add on complexity by way of different types of rules and different types of ways of interacting with the environment. But the mechanics remain pretty simple to that. The next thing I want to talk about is the actual mapping and creation of the dungeon, focusing first on the base game. So what we're looking at here are some sample rooms in Four Against Darkness, in D100 Dungeon, in Kernathalus, and the rules for creating this in 2D6 Dungeon. In the base game for these games, the uh, simplest of all of these is really ends up being Kernathalus and Four Against Darkness because you are given shapes and that's kind of pretty much it. You enter the room and then determine what is happening. In Kernathalus, there is a table to roll on that will give you some flavor text for what the room is about, but really that's it. It doesn't have any meaning mechanically in the game. You can make it have meaning by bringing in other things, but it it really doesn't have any meaning. In the base game of D100 Dungeon, you can notice these different colors here, and those correspond to different kinds of spaces. So, so the red one, for example, would be a combat encounter. The green one might be some sort of geomorphic or environmental impact. And there are special rooms in blue down at the bottom that depend on your particular quest. So you get built into that some variety. In 2D6 Dungeon, though the actual visuals in the core rulebook don't look like much, you're just mapping something out yourself. In the base game itself, you are getting, I mean, in a sense, that's the core of the game. You are getting a huge amount of tables that you are rolling on to create the room. And you get a room type, you get a description of the room, you get a sense of whether it's unique or not, what type of doors they are, how you can interact with the room, maybe a combat interaction, it may be some other type of encounter. And so you can see here, you have a description and an encounter, what the exits are, the room type itself, and this is by far the richest of the bunch in terms of just giving you what that room is. And in fact, when you play the game, the dungeon that you end up with as a result of that will be immediately very rich. So for example, here's a look at the first level of one of my games, and you can see how I have labeled the various rooms and what is in them. And here's a look at the second level in that same game. And likewise, you could see that we had lots of different types of rooms that came just out of the base game and the base rolling on the tables. By contrast, 
here's a look at a some gameplay that I was doing not out of the base game, but in the treacheries of the troublesome towns in Four Against Darkness and rolling on some of the town areas and creating them. But you could see it's still pretty generic. You're bringing in tables and things, but the um, description themselves is is slightly um, slightly more generic. And here's the kind of zoomed out view of that neighborhood in the uh, four against darkness treacheries of the troublesome towns that I was creating. And there is, it is key to what's going on there in terms of the, the events and things and what the shop is, but this is what the actual mapping ends up looking like. And then I continued along creating the, the details as we zoomed in, but that is definitely from the expansion content. The, the base, the base outline becomes something like that. I don't have an example of an old dungeon from that game to show you, nor do I really have anything from D100 because I quickly moved to using the tiles in that game, which I will talk about later in the video. I did find this. Uh, this is an example of how I was mapping one of the D100 games, but I will say that I don't tend to play by drawing it out. I tend to play differently, and I will get to that as we move on. So the, uh, the next point I want to talk about is in terms of combat in these games. Now, Combat in the 2D6 dungeon, I think, is the, the thing about the game that turned me off about it the most. And of course, it is to everyone's different taste. But the mechanics of that are such that you're rolling 2D6, and the 2D6 is determining whether or not you have a, a hit, whether there is an interruption of your attack, etc. And the... Uh, the, the mitigation of the dice happens with something called a shift. Uh, you get to move the die up but or down to get the numbers that you want to match up on your weapon to get the hit. Now, I said I wasn't going to talk a lot about mechanics, but I think in this game, the, the combat is so mechanical that it's hard to talk about it without referencing the mechanics. And I think for me personally, as a player, it became too repetitive, uh, too mechanical and did not, it, it, it drew out some of the flavor of the game, especially when I was sort of stuck with one weapon for the entire game. And I didn't really have a feeling of any action. It felt despite the dice manipulation, oddly static. With Four Against Darkness in the base game, I didn't really say this, but you are going to be having characters that are sort of a generic fantasy uh, standard character type. So you have options of like the warrior, the cleric, the rogue, the wizard, the barbarian, the elf, the dwarf, or the halfling in the base game. And they all have different strengths as you would expect, very classic to the genre. And so as such, as you are performing your combat, even though you're just basically rolling a d6 and trying to get a single value, you have some choices as to how you are using your various characters. Um, are you using magic from your, if you have a magic user, are you trying to do some sort of a ranged attack? Are you going in for melee? And so it is a, a light but effective way of creating a more three-dimensionality, I think, for combat than I was able to experience in 2D6 Dungeon. In D100 Dungeon, you are having, again, the granularity comes into play because you are going to be rolling uh, this your D100 and trying to get um, a value that will be a hit. And then you are going to be seeing, well, where did you do that hit? And if you did that hit somewhere, was the damage absorbed? And if it was absorbed, by how much? So it can, on the one hand, run the risk of becoming a little bit mechanical, but because it's using a D100 system and because there are many more options, than there are in 2D6, at least from the combat perspective. I think the mechanics tend to fade away a little bit more while still retaining the sense that you are aiming a weapon, somebody's dodging out of the way, and that it becomes a dynamic feeling without too much overhead. So I think if you're looking for something that offers a little more dynamic feeling without 
the mechanics getting in the way too much, D100 Dungeon on the combat level might be something to look for. It's it's richer, I think, in that regard than 2D6 Dungeon. I think Kernathalus is, as maybe come a theme in this video, somewhat of a midpoint there between uh, those two things, because in the combat here, you do have the option of deciding, well, I guess it's not really an optional rule. Um, it is a rule in terms of where you are, where the hit is going to be. So you're rolling on that after you get your hit. And then various characters have weaknesses. And if you happen to hit an area that is a weakness, you get an increased uh, benefit to your damage. And there's also a an option to uh, become defensive and to roll on a table that will give you some options for ways to deflect damage. So that also adds some variety to the combat. And all of the enemies in this game have short tables, they're D6 tables for the actions that they take. So they have thematic types of attacks that they will do. And then they also have different traits that they may have, like frightening is going to cause you to have to do something. So the interaction there feels very real. Whereas the, well, I should say it's all fantasy, not real, but you know, it feels like there's a little more depth to it. Whereas certainly in the base game of Four Against Darkness, the enemies are pretty generic. Now, in the expansions to Four Against Darkness, and again, this will become a theme, there is just so much variety, so much material that you are getting. Um, you can have entire books like this one that will give you new types of enemies to fight, and they're very thematic. And though the mechanics remain simple, and again, you can turn to another video to understand what those are if that matters to you, but the mechanics remain simple, but they're adding in a lot of theme by building out uh, what the character might do based on what it is. And that comes with the expansions of For Against Darkness. So that is a little bit of a look inside the combat. And then going along with that is the, the sense or the feeling of exploration. And in D100 Dungeon, in the base game, you are given tables to roll on to create a quests and they are very again familiar if you're familiar with sort of fantasy gaming you know finding something bringing something and you get a ton of content here and this by the way is a look at what the enemies in d100 dungeon based game look like so you have the the orc there and some stats and then um, what an ability it might have and what you get if you can succeed. But you don't really get much more than that. So it is very, it is heavy on the, the stats and the rolling. The uh, exploration to get back to that is you can create your, your quests here and go through the, the quest to try to achieve the goal of that. And one early quest, for example, is to gather monster parts. And so you need to um, kill monsters that will get you the types of parts that you need. And that's going to contribute to the gold and the experience that you have. And you could see here the listing of the quest. So it is in a, in a good way, it is kind of generic in that it does touch all the bases. You have things, like I said, trying to uh, gain certain relics or trying to study certain magical things or find a certain book. So there are options within here that lend some theme and flavor to it. But in essence, what you are doing is just creating these dungeons and going through and having the encounters and getting the loot and with the quests, hoping that you're getting the right loot and you are encountering the correct dungeon tiles so that you get to the ones that are your blue objective tiles uh, to fulfill your quest. Now in Four Against Darkness, the base game is also fairly generic, and I think that it is a um, pretty standard, very, very baseline um, dungeon crawl. And I would say that um, you are fighting monsters, and you are fighting uh, vermin and minions, and then you are trying to kill the boss. I mean, that is 
That is it in a nutshell for the base game. Where Four Against Darkness shines and perhaps is even um, necessary is in all the multiple expansions for the game that allow you to customize the quests, the types of characters that you use, the environments that you're traveling in, and the objectives and goals that you have. And I have done a video, and I will put a link to the video here and below, talking about where to get started with Four Against Darkness if you want to expand beyond the base game, which I think is almost essential to do. This is a look at some of the content that I have purchased for the game, not even all of it. I think it is essential to get the variety of different types of quests, as I said, and different types of themes as well. And um, we will sort of drift into talking about the uh, themes there in a moment. But um, that is for Four Against Darkness, I think, essential to get more of a flavor and a feeling for the game. Whereas in Kernathalis, for example, this feeling of being in the um, this under this endless necropolis is in the base game. It's in this book because all of the enemies are those types of necrotic enemies and they all have descriptions and they all have a variety of different types of attacks. And even though the room descriptions themselves don't have mechanical value, you are getting that sense of exploration and, and theme and uh, a depth of a play from the encounters that you have. And there is another mechanic here where there is an encroaching darkness and that as you, the longer you're spending in this dungeon, there are going to be dungeon wide effects that happen. And that is going to, again, sort of hit home on the, the theme of being in this underground necropolis and trying to kill the 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 monsters and to attain your personal goals that you have so instead of certain quests you have these personal goals that you will choose at the outset and when you well sorry about that i was saying that when you attain your personal goals you get certain benefits that go with that and that leads naturally into the conversation about leveling up and the leveling up conversation I think can be relatively brief because I do have fairly strong opinions about that and what it feels like in the game to level up. Going along with the incremental nature of the attributes and stats in D100 Dungeon and how they improve, leveling up to me in this game has always felt a little bit slow. The One of the expansions brings in a capacity to begin the game at a higher level as opposed to going through the training missions that you have here to level up. So you can start at a higher level, but even when you're at that higher level, to continue to grow your character and to have better attributes and better numbers to be rolling under does take a really long time. And I have always had an issue with that in this game. There's a lot I love about D100 Dungeon and I've played it quite a bit but it does make it a little bit, uh, to my taste, a little bit um, of a, uh, almost feeling like a chore to get to a place where you are taking a character and leveling it up. So I find myself just starting over again with different characters, with different weapons and attributes and, and, and such, because that feels more malleable to me than the one character. It almost begins to feel a little bit like a grind. Now, I know people who actually really like that because there's a sense of achievement. There's a sense of when you get to a new level, you've really worked hard to get there and nothing's just given to you. So that is something to be aware of with D100 Dungeon that um, it, it does take a while to actually level up. Now in Four Against Darkness, there is a, a kind of mechanic where you get to a place and you get to do a level up role for a character, not even your whole party, and you can fail that role. So there's no guarantee that you will actually even level up. This is, um, we're looking at not leveling up, but just the, the general way that you move through and fill out your rooms. Um, but when you, when you do get to be, uh, leveling up, it is a situation where you are, 
um, having this this role that may or may not succeed. So that's something else to note. And we'll just quickly take a look here at this. Um, when you get to be a certain killing a boss or surviving a certain amount of encounters, you do your experience roll, you roll your die, and if you get higher, you gain a level, and then certain things happen. But if you don't, you don't gain the level. So that is also something to take into consideration. When I play this game, I will say uh, up front, I use my house rule, and when I get to the, the mark when you can do your experience roll, I automatically pass it and I automatically level up because I felt otherwise it was just too frustrating to be in a situation where you could level up and then not be able to do that. With 2d6 uh, dungeon, you are going down into uh, various levels of the, the dungeon and your character, I have to be honest in saying I can't remember off the top of my head how the leveling up actually works in here. Okay, I remember now, and um, it's interesting that I didn't remember because really the leveling up in this game, again, for me, this is where the game sort of falls flat, is you're getting some different abilities to mitigate these dice and you're getting like another option with the same weapon, which again, I just don't love. I want the, I want the ability to find weapons and, and get new weapons that you just don't have here. So really what does happen in this game that what the leveling up feels like in this game to me is that as you acquire things, as you go through all these really detailed dungeon levels, picking up things, interacting with furniture, finding um, potions and finding God offerings and making, doing some crafting and things. As all of that happens, your capacity to interact with the dungeon, your capacity to get out of danger, your capacity to um, have successful encounters really deepens. And that to me is what the leveling up in this game feels like. It is different than the mechanical technical leveling up, but that's really what it feels like. And it does feel like that as you go down into the dungeon, it's really about what you can get and what you can use from what you have and taking the risks of interacting with your environment. Um, the risk being that somebody's going to, a patrol is going to wander by and see you. But the more stuff you have, the more you play the game with your single character, you, you get more of that and it feels really like you are leveling up. And then in Kernathalis, you do have a, a system of leveling up with experience points and it is, um, you get experience, uh, contributing to that for combat encounters or dealing with like a locked container or something like that. And then you get to increase, you know, any of the, the various um, things that you, you, some choices about character progression. It feels very integrated. It doesn't, um, it, this is a tightly designed game and everything does feel very integrated into it. So um, you are um, moving along and at a, at a point, at a certain point with a certain number of encounters, you feel like you're ready to level up and lo and behold, you have the experience and you do so. So it's pretty integrated as in terms of the game. Now, the last thing I want to talk about is the um, combination of the expansion content slash what do you need to play, really to play the game. And let's start first of all with D100 Dungeon. I think actually you can play this game just with this book pretty effectively. There is a ton of gameplay in just this book. And if the gameplay is to your liking, you're going to be incentivized to play it because you want to get all the different armors. You want to trade up. You want to see what type of boosts you can roll on to get. You um, want to find all the things that you can find and encounter all the various tiles. So I actually think that this in and of itself is all you need to play. And of course, some, some dice or a die roller. That said, there is a bunch of expansion content for it. And I don't know if this is all of it. We will take a look, brief look at some. There's a variety of content here. So this book, which is one of the later ones, book six, is a world builder book that you can use with new quests. And I will say, Again, I think one of the dings on the game, I've said this in other videos, that every expansion expansion content in here, even if it is a basic sort of choose your own adventure like this Rune Forge, also comes with some new rules. And I think the spreading out the rules that way is just kind of a bummer because you want to be able to access all the rules 
and there just isn't one place for them. Well, actually, maybe I'll eat my words. I'm not sure this particular book has any new rules, but most of them do. So the world building here offers a lot of additional things to travel, to get out of the dungeon, to have, um, to create a map. And I think that that's a great way, can be integrated just with the main book. It's a great place to go if you want to kind of literally step out of a dungeon. Then there are these adventure books that are basically very detailed sort of choose your own paragraph adventure things where you read a story and then you have encounters and it will integrate with the existing tiles that you have. There is a physical component mapping game that we'll take a look at briefly in a second, but you don't need that to play with it here. And then there are just, there's another book, This Lost Home of uh, Extraordinary Rules has both new quests and it also has new things, new spells, new rules for crafting and such. So there's there's a lot here. I have not done a video, I don't think, on kind of where to go next in the game and it's too off topic for this video to get into it, but I think that um, the expansion content does offer a lot. The world building I think is pretty key to that as well as the uh, the initial second expansion, the one that gives you the option of beginning at a higher level. That might be the Adventurer's Companion, I'm not completely sure. Those rules I think come into play a lot and will help. Yes, these the new hero paths and um, the ways of um, the fast the adventure of fast track option. So I think if you're just getting into the game, maybe having the main book and then some combination of the adventurer's companion and the world builder is the way to go. If you prefer to play with physical components, even though it is a mapping game, sorry for that noise, you can do so excuse me, even though it is a pen and paper game, you can do so by purchasing the mapping game. And these are tiles and things and cards that will correspond to and be able to be played with the base game as well as the um, some of the expansions. So you have your monsters on the cards and all the stats here. There's like a neoprene mat that you can set up to lay out all of this stuff. You can pull tokens that will be telling you what the encounters are. And there are um, other tokens for keeping track of items. So if you want this to play like a more like a board game, it's possible. I do have a video, I believe, where I demonstrate how that looks. And if, if, if I can find that, I'll try to remember to put the link um, up here. So that is the um, D100 mapping game accessories, not essential at all. For D100, all you really need is the base game. If you want to go somewhere, look at the world building and then the first Adventurer's Companion expansion. Well, we already touched on Four Against Darkness a little bit, and I've done tons of videos on them. I have a whole playlist about it and a video, as mentioned earlier, about where to go with the expansions. I think the expansions for Four Against Darkness, at least some of them, are more or less essential to provide some depth for the game. The, the main rule book almost seems like just a framework that was then further developed as expansions came into being. And I will say that it's been many years of the original rule book not being modified or updated, and it is very disorganized, and it is um, it sorely in need of a second edition, but I, I'm not sure that a second edition is ever going to be forthcoming, so I wouldn't hold your breath on that. The Treacheries of the T Troublesome Towns, as I've done uh, in my video, as I've demonstrated in my video, offer a ton of content and really expand this game to let you, it's a living town generator, it's a town you can play in with your characters, you can return to, it has persistent things that happen in it. It's just a wonderful addition. Some of the other ways to expand this are to take it in, say, a darker direction if you got that expansion or a lighter um, direction if you got this expansion. And so I would say that for this game to increase the flavor, increase the theme, and take the theme in any number of different ways, to investigate getting some of the expansion content. And there's of course no shortage of material on the web about that, not the least of which are my own videos discussing the books I have. I have about 20 different 
books for this game, and it's probably the the game system that I have spent the most money on and, and own the most of. So um, there's a wide variety, but it is some of it at least is necessary, I think, to get you out of the kind of generic barbarian, cleric, fighter, rogue thing in a generic dungeon. But the expansion content effectively goes in lots of different thematic directions and um, you can purchase one or more of them and slowly build up to you know a library like this if you really do enjoy the game for 2d6 dungeon this was a kickstarter that i backed i don't do kickstarters i'll have to say but i was intrigued enough by this one to back it and when i backed it i backed the expansion that was the only thing available at the time, which is the Lairs expansion. I'll have to say I haven't played this yet. It is just more of the wonderful tables that come with this game. These are Lairs. I think you can play them kind of independently of going down into this like one 10 level dungeon that you are doing. And um, it has all the tables in there just as set up as similar to the other thing. I also backed the cards. So this is an optional add-on as well and it is not necessary for the game but you get cards that have all of your enemies on them and they have some of the loot that you will find these uh, herbs that you need to craft things and make offerings and then they have some cards that help with combat they are not necessary as i said they they i enjoy them and i like to have cards in my gameplay so i i did back that addition to the Kickstarter, not necessary. So really for 2D6 Dungeon, the the only thing needed is the core game. And that gives you, as I said, a ton of content, really rich content in terms of what the dungeon is, mechanically, not to my liking. And so then finally, that leaves us with Kurnathalus. Now we are back to where I usually do my filming and also play my games and i couldn't do filming here because i'm in the middle of playing kernathalus and what i am doing in this game is using the cards that are have been developed for the game that the designer was kind enough to send me these are not um expand well they contain there's one expansion a zine pdf expansion and i believe the the tables are contained these are basically the tables um, in the game in the form of cards and they are as you can see they're they're just the text of the card here so this event card is the same text as would be in the game but you can then play the game by pulling in the cards so you could uh, instead of rolling you can just pull in the map card and you have your exploration your flavor text for the rooms for the corridors you have your events here if you scavenge and your combat encounters and then this actually is the character that i'm playing so i kind of gather together the stuff that i got i'm also recording it on a character sheet so this is not really additional content it's just a new form for the content i really like it i don't think it is um i don't think it is essential but it is it is nice for lack of a better word i like to be able to pull in a card and you could see here it's even telling you it's really referring to the book so you you can't just have these cards you still need the main book which of course contains the rules as well as the tables that are represented here by these cards I really hope that the designer will provide more content for this game he is I think known for doing lots of different games and not necessarily one game with many many different expansions and additions so I hope that he will provide and continue to provide new content for this game the base game is super rich and there's a lot of gameplay in it it's super thematic and it only really falls short only really fall short, I think, in the disconnect between the thematic room descriptions and like, any meaning in the game. So, for example, in this room, you learn a once powerful empress was buried here. 
her empty sarcophagus adorned with um, gilded glyphs, but it, it doesn't really mean anything. There's, you know, there isn't a mechanic for like trying to pry one loose and use it for something. It's not, it's not tied into anything. Um, it is purely just flavor text. And I think if there's any ding I have on this game, which is one that I have come to really love really quickly, it is that. And that brings me to the final point I want to make in this video, which is like, what is my personal ideal pen and paper dungeon crawl? Well, if you've been around this channel, you know it's not going to be a simple answer. And if you haven't been around the channel that long, welcome to the kind of answer I'm going to give to a question like that, which is not just one thing. And I would say that right now, what I am working on for my own gameplay is using the Kernathalus rules, which I love, and the theme of this game, and integrating the tables and things from 2d6 Dungeon into this game so that when I go into a room here, there's something there and I can interact with it. The enemies that I am fighting, I am using mostly from Kernathalus, although I'm trying to figure out a way because there are more enemies in 2d6 dungeon of um, bringing in some of those thematic enemies like the patrols and such and giving them some basic Kernathalus stats so that I can also use some of the enemies in here. And putting that together right now is something I am working on off camera just for my own entertainment, really. But overall, I would say that Kernathalus really is the complete package for me at the moment. Four Against Darkness is always going to have a special place in my heart. I think the just the sheer variety in theme of it and the the volume of the output of this, uh, the, the designers that work on this and the the way you can create a town and go back to it. I mean, I would I would love to create a town in here and maybe send some characters from here into that town. I mean, that's that's something else to think about and integrate. I think these are the, I would say, for lack of a better way of saying it, the most active dungeon crawls in my collection right now. It has been a while since I have taken D100 Dungeon out, and that is, I think, partially because of what I described to you with, there's something about the fact that the rules are, a lot of the newer rules that I really like that involve interactivity and crafting and things, they're just spread out over so many books, which is partially reflective of these um these tabs that I have on, on the books that it just, it feels a little bit all over the place for me to try to get it together and actually play the game. And the leveling up is rather granular. So I kind of find myself keep starting, keeping to start over and over again with different characters. And so something a little bit is lost there for me. So that is a look inside some pen and paper dungeon crawls and my thoughts on how you might assess which of them is the right one for you.